guys, so today I'm going to be doing a drama review of Gakshita. Gakshita ended last week, but I never got a chance to finish it until just today. I'm going to try my best to be rational throughout this video, but do understand that I may just burst out in tears at random times. If you have not seen this drama, I recommend that you do not watch this video because I will be talking about different things throughout the entire thing that will spoil it for you. And if you are thinking, oh, you know what, I don't plan on watching it anyway, I'll just watch this. Take that back right now and go back and start watching it because you will regret it because it is just that good. There are many majorly important roles played by different characters throughout this entire series, but like the four main ones are played by Juon, Jinseon, Pakyung, and Han Chea. I don't know if I'm saying those right because I forgot to look up the Hangul or just have the romanization, but I mean, I mean yeah. But despite the fact that it's 1930s, there were some like outfits that looked a little too modern to be like, you know, 1930s based, but that's okay. And also another thing that really confused me is like the whole phone system. Like, I swear, they pick up the phone, they hit the thing twice, and then it goes to the color that they're like want to talking. The, the color that they're wanting to talk to. And I, I I don't know how that works. It's it's witchcraft, I tell you, it's witchcraft. From the first episode I knew I was gonna really love this drama. Because, like, it starts off at this parade of this guy who is died. He has something really major to do with, like, Japan. So all the people who are Korean, they have to pretend to be, like, mourning for his death and everything. But then, all of a sudden, Mokdan, she throws, like, a stone or whatever at the picture of the guy. And Ikanto is like one of the Japanese officers and that's one thing I really love about this drama. Our heroic protagonist is not actually you know the hero at the beginning he's the villain he's the one that all the Koreans hate he's the one that everybody thinks you know he's an awful person but not until later in the show does he progressively become you know like the hero that we all know and love as Gakshita. So Lee Kang To runs off and like chases Mukdan and stuff and Gakshita comes and he's like kicking ass and everything and I'm like this is gonna be an awesome show and another thing that made me realize that like this is gonna be so good is that I cried in the first episode not that it takes a lot to make me cry because I cried everything but like you know when there was the flashback of Kangsan when he was you know not loopy Kangsan is Ikanto's brother by the way he was like you know doing stuff he was the brains of the family and Ikanto was adorably cute and looked out for his brother so much. And you know, and his mom comes in with like potatoes and stuff and they're eating it. And the two boys are playing around and it was just super cute and it made me really sad because like, you know, that's what their relationship used to be. And now Ikanto kind of is ashamed and like looked out and s looks down upon his brother and it, it was upsetting. We're also introduced to Shunji in the first episode. Shunji is a character at the beginning who was total total totally nice guy like you just had to love him whenever you saw him he was japanese he is japanese but he loved just on children and that's who he taught like he was a school teacher shunji and kanto were like bffffs for life it was a short and brief bromance that they had in the show but i loved it and i missed it at the end what caused ikanto to become gakshita is one of like the most heartbreaking things in this drama it's because Kangsan, as we find out in episode 2, is actually Gakshita. And once you find that out, it's pretty sad actually, because like, then you see Ikanto like beating him and like being ashamed of him in public, and you see him crying, like Kangsan's on the floor, he's just taking it because he can't do anything. It's part of his facade, he has to be like this crazy guy in order to like remain as Gakshita. In the end, he does actually end up killing his brother, but he didn't know. So he follows the trail of blood from after he shot Kangsan because Kangsan runs back to the house. And there, Kangto's mother is already dead because Shunji's brother, who was like a superintendent at the police station at the time, had killed the mother because she was trying to protect Kangsan because she had just found out that he was Gakshita and she didn't want to, like, you know, have his identity ruined. And she was shot. When Kanto comes and you realize who Gakshita is, it's the saddest thing. You know, just watching him cry. It was it was heartbreaking. And then when he goes inside to see his mother did as well, it was oof. Ugh, it was sad. When Kanto first becomes Gakshita, it's more of like a revenge to get the people who killed, like, you know, um, his mother. And so he goes back to the police station and he kills 
Shinji's older brother. And as that happens, and he like delivers the final blow, Shinji walks in and he sees what happens. And that's pretty much where things start to go downhill, which is really unfortunate because Shinji was so cute. Shinji is pretty much forced into the position of his brother's previous position. That was kind of redundant. Well, he was forced into that new position, and I mean, I don't know when it starts getting to his head, but it's awful. It's it's awful because at first he's like, you know, I just have to take this job, and then things just 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 get bad. Shinji becomes an awful person. I don't know. I don't know when the change happened, but it did. He seriously becomes so crazy, like. He's obsessed with Mokdan, he like, you know, he really wants to be with her and all this stuff, but he's totally not in the right mindset at all, and it's terrifying to see that switch, like, to see, like, someone go that far down, like, in the dark. The fact that he can never, you know, redeem himself, it's what's awful. So, skipping for, like, a bunch of episodes, Mokdan finally finds out that Ikanto was got you to all this time. She takes off his mask and I'm like, oh, because I figured she'd be mad because he had beat her so many times. Like before he, he got that got you persona, he had brought her into the police station, like whipped her, did all these things. Mokdan has been in that police station more than anybody that I've known. They're like, oh, we need to get this bastard, this, this, this wench. We have to bring her in to get this bastard. And just let you know, that bastard and that wench takes up about 75% of the entire show's like vocabulary. Like I swear, that's like the only words that they like to use. Nobody had names. That wench, that bastard, that son of a bitch, that Jap bastard. And I'm like, okay guys, this, let's get this under control. So yeah, after Mokdan finds out, the cuteness finally begins between the two of them and they're so adorable. When Shuji finds out about Ikanto being, you know, Gachita though, it like, freaking scared the shit out of me like i'm not even kidding he went to the alleyway and he took off his mask i was hyperventilating that entire time it freaked me out so bad like so bad <laughs> i was like this is not going to be good like i knew he he already had his suspicions he had a very very strong suspicion but for him to actually like see it i was like oh shit so Shinji eventually gets Ikanto to go into the box of nails and he tortures him and all this stuff. And I hated every second of it, especially when his father, Shinji's father, comes down and he's just like carelessly just pushing that box back and forth. And he's screaming, he's screaming in his box and his blood everywhere. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't, wa I, I was seriously watching three fingers like this. I couldn't do it. In episode 27, Ikanto finally kills Shinji's father. And it's not just bad that he killed him, I mean, it was obviously inevitable, but the bad part is, is that Shunji comes in as he's killing him. And like, talk about the worst, you know, deja vu-ish moments, because like, he walks in and got Chita killing his brother. He walks in and got Chita, you know, killing his father. And it's, oof, oof. And then in the end, when, um, Mokdan was supposed to be marrying Kanto. You know, I was so paranoid when it was happening because, like, I saw that white dress and I'm like, you know what any Jamu would love to do? Spoil that with, like, you know, a red, you know, red blood. Or, like, you know. And sadly enough, I had to be right, you know? <laughs> the next episode, the very beginning, <laughs> she gets shot. Like, I, 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 I didn't really, I was in denial, I didn't really want it to happen, I just figured, you know, that's what a drama would do, and that's exactly what they did. And, he, she, <laughs> she gets shot, and so, not only her, but, you know, the circus leader, he gets shot down, the comrade, he gets shot down, all the, like, the young soldiers, they're shot and killed and everything. And, he kind of takes both down into the forest, you know, to try to... You know, just to take her away from there. And she's like, you know, put me down. And, you know, you can't cry. It's our wedding day. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. It's your wedding day. This isn't supposed to happen on your wedding day. She makes a promise to be strong. He just holds her. 
and then he kind of nods. <laughs> and then she dies. And then you hear him wail, to hear him wail like that, it, it hurt me so much. Cause he's gone through so much, he's lost so many people. And then of course Shoji has to come and just like, screw it up, and he's like, this is your fault. I don't like, how could you distort something like that so much? You shot her, you shot her. But then, thankfully, the odd she comes and he like, knocks him out or whatever. And then Shunji, when he wakes up, he has the nerve to just look at the blood spot. Like, me saying that, I started crying again. But then he's, like, sobbing at it. And, like, literally, I was screaming at my iPad. And I'm like, you have no right. You have no right. You did this. And I was just, I was so angry and I was so upset. Let me just get to, like, the final, like, really final part that hit me. Shunji is ready, you know, to get confronted by Ikanto and you know he's in his room and he gets his gun and he cocks it and he puts it in that drawer and I'm talking to myself while watching this and I'm like why do I have a feeling that's not a gun that he's going to use to kill Ikanto and of course I have to be right again Ikanto comes in and they share a drink and everything and he's like you know one of us has to die we can't we can't both go on living like this and Shoji agrees and he's like go out I'll meet you out front <laughs> and he comes to go and I'm like you shouldn't have left you shouldn't have left like there's no way he got done I don't think he could have lived with himself like killing Shuji either because that was his best friend at some point like it would have really hurt him but then Shuji takes out the gun and he shoots himself I like I predicted it. I knew it was gonna happen, but just to see like a person change so much, it killed me. It was it was a bear. He used to be a really nice like school teacher. He didn't want to be involved in all this like officer stuff. When he had the chance to be an officer before, he gave that position up for Ikanto. And then to see like the monster that he turned into, all the people he killed, all the people he manipulated, and then and then he killed himself and. The ending of the show, though, I really love. They're having the annexation, the Japanese Korean Annexation Day celebration or whatever again. It was something else to watch that happen. You see all the, the men in black, the soldiers, you know, marching towards the police station and everything. Was it police station? I don't remember. I think, I don't know. I think it was, yeah. They're marching towards it, and then you see these swarms of Joseon Korean people, you know, dressed in white, and they're all wearing Gachita masks, and they're marching with these Korean flags, and it was, it was some powerful stuff right there. It was, it was nice to see everybody just come together, you know, it was the start of an uprising, like, obviously, if you're talking about this historically, drink, like, when this drama is set, it's not when Korea officially becomes free, but this is like the start of them trying to become free and everything. It was, it was awesome. Then the slow motion running and the, the bombs, and I'm like, yes. And then you see Ikanto in the middle of everybody, and they're making their way. And oh, so good, so good. I really like dramas that are like not only, you know, fluffy romance comedy things which are really nice as well but I like things that make me feel something like legitimately feel a strong connection to the characters and everything and really the only dramas that made me do that are 49 days city hunter and gotcha talk so I guess those would be my top three dramas but yeah so I'm really sorry about my crying but it's such a good drama if I gave this show a rating out of 10 I would seriously give it a 10 out of 10 because it was just that amazing Alright, so thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye!